Well, thank you for that, uh, that talk and uh, a nice introduction to, to mine as well because I'm going to introduce on the policy framework <coughs> that um, climate change is operating under um, in the UK and beyond and which is driving the process by which um, technology will be drawn into the equation and hopefully help to solve climate change. Um, just a quick introduction to me, I'm Head of Investor Engagement at the Carbon Trust, so I ex I, my role is to explain the consequences of climate change to the investor community. I focus particularly on institutional investors, but also on um, investors in new technologies. <coughs> now if we just start with the global situation, um, there is of course a huge climate change challenge and it's worth always reminding ourselves of that challenge. Uh, business as usual emissions are on a trajectory that is rapidly rising and if they're not arrested we would get to well over a thousand parts per million CO2 and a five to eight degree temperature rise. Uh, what we need to achieve is somewhere around the 450 to 550 parts per million um, stability range as identified by the Stern report. And you can see there that that's a dramatic change in emissions um, between a 60 and 80 percent reduction over the business as usual emissions in 2050. Um, what we found in speaking to investors um, in the city particularly is that there's a kind of a broad consensus something will be done about climate change but it will likely be somewhere around that middle mark, the 650 parts per million. So there's still an adjustment to take place in expectation. If we look at the UK, although we start with a position where emissions are relatively flat, um, our challenge is to reduce by 60 to 80 percent from today's figure uh, uh, by 2050. And on current forecasts, we would only achieve around a 20 percent reduction um, so there's a lot more room for, for, for change and there is still a policy gap which will need to be filled in terms of more aggressive and broader policies to achieve that reduction. So what we need is a framework that operates at three levels. First of all, a global framework by which different countries have targets to reduce uh, emissions. Secondly, uh, regional policy uh, for regional trading blocks, potentially linked up into global um, cap-and-trade systems, and we will see uh, the presence of the European Union very heavily in the policy field that affects the UK. And then domestic policy, um, domestic policy at the UK level. And there are really three policy tools that can be used. And these are actually articulated in the Stern reports, and I've slightly adapted them. The first is to apply a cost of carbon and to impose the cost of the pollution in the emissions on those that emit. And that could be through a cap and trade system or through a straight carbon tax. And the second is forms of targeted instrument that seek to address barriers to change, to behaviour change, which are not necessarily. Um, going to be achieved by just a straight cost of carbon. And so that might be the imposition of minimum standards, particularly in buildings and in transport. It could be labelling so that consumers, purchasers can make their choice. It could be other information. It could be the work that the Carbon Trust um, does with many of its clients, explaining how to uh, reduce emissions and what the, the, the financial benefits are. And then there's a range of specific technology development support. Whilst the cost of carbon and other instruments does have a pull effect on technology, it doesn't necessarily accelerate new technology development rapidly <coughs> enough. And so there are specific measures in place that provide financial incentives to new technologies, and there are a range of grant systems such as the ETI, the, the Carbon Trust, um, in that broad bracket of, of grant. <coughs> If we look at um, first the energy demand situation, and it's absolutely right to look at supply and demand. If we look at energy demand in the UK, you can see it in four different categories. This is the way I've subdivided it. So first, this is not particularly to scale. First, you've got the, the business sector, which has a manufacturing emissions component 
and a commercial building submissions component. And the, the business sector you can then subdivide into the large energy intensive, uh, the large energy non-intensive, uh, public sector and then small medium sized enterprises. There's then consumer buildings and today I'm going to put buildings in one category so we'll deal with that together. There's transport and there's agriculture and actually I'm not going to speak particularly about agriculture, it's, it's mostly outside the carbon trust remit but the emissions there are quite considerable and um, are a mixture of carbon dioxide, methane and NOx from um, fertilisers. So if we look at large energy intensive manufacturing, a block which is um, uh, around the sort of 10% mark of, of emissions in the UK, uh, the primary mechanism is at the European level. It's the European Emissions Trading System and it's the largest cap and trade system in the world with um, credits or total value of carbon for around 60 billion euros each year. We're currently in phase two of the EU ETS and uh, now the proposals are on the table for the phase three period and that will be a much longer period, an eight year trading period uh, to 2020 from 2013. Um, there will be increased use of auctioning um, the intention is to head to 100% auctioning of permits so that means that businesses will bear the full cost of all the carbon they emit. Um, there may be some exceptions and it will be ramped up over time. Um, power generation will start off, the current proposal is, with 100% with um, auctioning of permits from 2013. There will be somewhat increased scope, aluminium will be included, some chemicals, aviation uh, and possibly commercial shipping. Um, there will no longer be national allocation plans, there will be a single European Union target. So the, uh, the target for the whole zone will be set uh, in, in one go. And there is the room for tougher targets in the case that we achieve an international agreement. So the overall um, reduction target for the European Union will move from 20 to 30 percent reductions by 2020 if we can achieve a, an international agreement and that is obviously a, 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 something that needs to be determined through the UNFCC framework.